Good morning, everyone. It is indeed a privilege and a pleasure to be found in the house of the Lord today. We are running a little late because we were out in the field this morning worshiping with our shatins. So I'm happy to welcome each and every one back as we continue our service today. Brother Cummings will be doing his feature on stewardship, on stewardship, and we will have that at this time. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. As we gather together to ask the Lord's blessing, as we assemble, we want to, this is second Sabbath, that stewardship, and information that I want the church to receive a note because we need education process in our church. Father, we thank you for this Sabbath day. Bless us as even as we go through this present short presentation in Jesus' name. Every year the church has a budget. And the budget is formulated based on what we receive and what we may anticipate to receive. And the two main components are tithe return, our tithe to God, and then there's combined budget, our offerings. There's a time when I was a little boy, when Sabbath school people used to come and collect their offerings, everybody collected theirs, there's always an offering by coming all the time. Since then, they've come with this combined budget, which combines all the offerings that you give. Of that combined budget, 40% goes to the conference, or $4 out of every 10, and six remain with us. And that six is to run our church and to deal with our business. Then we have some issues call special funds. For example, we might want to get, buy some pews. We start a, a pew fund, and ask members to contribute to this fund. And that remains with us. We might have a building fund, so we maintain a building. That remains with us. These are special funds that the church approved that members contribute towards. Now, there may come a time when you feel strongly that you want to support something which might not be a special fund, a fund. I will suggest to you, I suggest to you, rather than just put it out there, you can consult with a treasurer and be guided, consult with one of the leaders and be guided if you want to make something special a special contribution, which we allocated for that. But I want us to realize that that's how our church operates, ties and combined budget. The combined budget is 40% goes to the conference and 60% remains here for us to run our business and do our business. Now. This morning, I came across a quote here called Core Workers with God in stewardship, the book of stewardship, comes from stewardship. It says, On the Lord thy substance, and with the first fruit of all thy increase, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. And I want to, because of time, I just want to conclude by letting us know that. Divine wisdom has appointed in the plan of salvation the law of action and reaction, making the work of beneficence in all its branches twice blessed. He who gives to the needy blesses others and is blessed himself in a still greater degree. He who gives bless others and is blessed himself to a greater degree. 
when God impresses our hearts, our giving, let us return to him what is rightfully his. You know, on Wednesday night this last month, Sister Glenning read a text in Matthew 5, 42. I read it several times, but it never struck me. And as serious as it did, Matthew 5, 42, give to him who acts and not to reject those who are seeking assistance. That's my short prayer of it as we go down. Listen, I want to, I want to encourage us Ask God for vision that we need to discern. I don't have time now, but I had an example to give you. I don't have time now. But I just want to mention to the church, I can wear my other hat, the stewardship, the, the community service hat. Today is a day where we make a distribution to our families and church, outside the church and our children. I'm going to go through what I want to speak about another time because it's really late now. But I had an experience yesterday that I must share with you. I must share with you. You know, Christian friends, sometimes at times we get too busy to know us God and work for God. Yesterday I got a call and it was a little bit taken back this is Friday. This is God's Sabbath. How should I, what should I do at this time? But here it was, Sister June, a call from a company that was reluctant to donate stuff to us before, Brother Joe. A company won't, won't tell you. Can you come to us now? We have some stuff for you. You know, and I said at this time, this is Friday. I was going elsewhere to collect something else. How to divert from that. But I won't tell the goodness of God. Amen. I decided I'll divert and go there to this company. And I called the lady. She said, I'm here waiting for you. I said, where did I find you? Just drive and come down. I'm looking, looking for you. I'll see you. Oh, she's there on the phone. I'll see you now. And Joe, when I got there, she said, this is what you bring? I had a pallet of stuff there waiting for me. This could hold your car. Did you bring for these things? And listen, listen, I said, all oh, the hold in Jesus' name, and we pack them in. Things that we have that we can distribute for a time, because they're not things that will perish. And that was a company that was reluctant to give us stuff. Hold on. And yes, it happened. Is this not the goodness of God? <laughs> Brethren, when we bless. When we bless others, God will bless us. Let's do what we can to help others. We are not going to lose, but return to God and for his cause. Father, we thank you for your goodness, for your beneficence to us. Help us to be benevolent as well. The more we give to you, the more you give to us. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Want to say it's a God? Well, we have this lag time. Let me just slip in here and bring your attention to a couple of things. Remember, last week I talked about the prayer box. I'm back with that again. Um, we want to make prayer central to how we function as a church. And crucial to that is your prayer request. So remember that. Write your prayer request. Slip it in the box here. You don't have to put your names. And then we will... You make those the focus of our prayer so that we know that we are presenting your needs before God. So just make sure that you slip your request in there. I think I see paper there. All you need to do is to write and just slip the, the request in. Remember our Wednesday night service continues this coming Wednesday night, 7.30 via Zoom. Again, we want you to be a part of that. This morning we had our shut-in program where we went to visit our shut-ins and that really allowed me to start the day on a high, and I hope that other people had that experience. I went, I went to Sister Lowe, and Matt came up, Carrie Ann came up, 
Patrick was in the line from overseas. As a matter of fact, Patrick did the closing prayer. So it was a total family experience. It was really enriching and really uplifting. I hope that those of you who went other places would have had that experience that I've had. I see Wayne doing this, so obviously he did. So remember, if you are not part of a group, remember we have eight standing groups. So if you're not part of a group, make sure you put yourself to, into a group so that when we come again next time, you will be with us and you know exactly what we're doing. So remember that. Um, we have eight persons, Brother Hal, Brother Don, myself, Brother Argo, Brother Chris, Brother Robert, Sister June, and Brother Winston. Those are the eight group leaders. So make sure that you belong to one of these eight groups so that we can really build this and let our shuttings understand that they are so important to us. Thank you so much for your cooperation on that. Remember next week we have the pulpit exchange. So Elder Gill from Belpin will be here. I'll be going off to Chalk to Mount, Chalky Mount, Mount Zion as it's called now. So just remember that. Remember the 28th of this month we will have our second prayer on walk breakfast. Sorry, walk breakfast. Right? Same thing, right? So just make sure that Again, the details are being worked on in terms of the route, etc. So remember the 28th, our second walk breakfast. As the little ones now come up, just remind you that your movie night is next week. 6.30 is your pickup time, so just make sure you're here to be part of that. So those are the essence, the things they want to, to bring to your attention this morning. Any other things we're working on? Let me just draw your attention to the fact that we are seeing some little things being done. The windowsills being repaired, the columns being worked on, and our building committee is building up to, for the major thing. When we come to that major thing, we will bring that to you because we will need your support on that. So in the meantime, little things are being done, but when we come to the major things, we will bring that, bring that to you so that you'll be able to give your support and your encouragement as we go along. So thank you so much. Happy Sabbath, church. I hope you had a wonderful time visiting the shut-ins this morning. Um, we will continue our worship with a few songs before we welcome the platform personnel. Just gotta hold your. Just waiting for the keyboard to get set up here. We're going to start with Come Christians Join to Sing, Hallelujah, Amen. Then we're going to go into Power in the Blood, Will You Be Free from Your Burdens of Sin.
be free from your burdens of sin. There is power in the blood. The king is exalted on high.
called to worship. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Psalm 29, verse 2. God from whom all blessings flow. Shekinah glory fill this place in Jesus' name. Amen. It is good that you have assumed the position of comfort and relative ease so that there was no need for me to tell you to sit. I want to let you know that if it had been possible for you to stay where you are and still look down from this vantage point, you would be pleased. Because this audience indeed looks attractive. There are no fronts in view. And everyone is happy because today is the Lord's day a day of relaxation in his presence and the rendering of honor and glory to his name. It is for this reason that the privilege is mine to welcome you to our divine service today. And not just you here, but all of you online looking on. If you could, besides seeing us virtually, so arrange your attendance that one of these days you could come out here physically. You would feel the warmth that we experience in this place as we worship corporately together. Please accept my welcome to this today's divine worship. And as we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, let us offer him our total being in all that we do. Our opening song is number 526, Because He Lives. Because He Lives.
morning, church. Pleasant Sabbath. Our scripture reading is taken from two scriptures from the book of John. First, we'll be turning our attention to John chapter 11, verses 55 to 57. Then we will turn our attention to John chapter 12, verses 11, verses 1 to 11. And the Jews, and the Jews' Passover was night at hand. And many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then sought they for Jesus and spake among themselves as they stood in the temple. What think ye that, ye, that he will not come to the feast? Now both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a commandment that if any man knew where he were, he should show it, that they might take him. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor, odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? That this he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief, and that the bag and, and that the bag and bear what was put there therein. Then said Jesus, "Let her alone against the day of my burying, hath she kept this?" For the poor always ye have with you, but me ye have not always. Much of the Jews therefore knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death, because by that, re because that by reason of him, Many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. Here ends the scripture reading. time, we make ourselves as reverent as possible while we on the platform kneel while prayer is offered. Whenever you have a voice, it's hush. And in quietness, we wait before him. The silence of the soul make 
most distinct, the voice of God. Loving Father, we come in your presence on this the Sabbath day as you have commanded to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. We come today to worship because you demand our worship. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you will pardon us this morning and forgive us from all our sin. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Because we have sinned by word, by thought, by deed, and even things left undone. And so, dear God, we ask that you will come divinely close to us in your person of your Holy Spirit as we await your presence here amongst us. We recognize our nothingness. We recognize, dear God, that we are in need of you. From day to day, we see the enemy after us who wants to take us out. But dear God, you pray that you, have, that you will be with us and that you will never leave us or forsake us. And we have the assurance that despite whatever may come our way, we can face the challenges of this life knowing that you are with us. We pray this morning that you will have mercy upon us. Because from time to time it seems as though we faint as for the things that are coming upon the earth. But dear God, we ask that you will continue to give us strength. You give us determination to hold on to you because you are there with us. We pray this morning that you will be with every member bowing in your presence. Some of us have come here this morning with our problems, but we know that you're the great problem solver. And we can lay every problem at your feet. And you will give us the answer to our problems. There are some of us who are ailing. We ask dear God that you will touch us from the crown of our heads even to the sole of our feet. And that you will deliver us from whatever malady Whatever concern we may have, we know that you have the solution and that you are still in the business of healing. You are still in the business of bringing men from the guttermost to the uttermost. We ask the Lord that you will continue to help us not to despair. We pray, dear God, that you will continue to be with us. We can trust in you because you have never yet lost a problem. You have never lost a battle. And dear God, we know that every battle, we can bring it to you because you will give us the strength and the power to be overcomers. Thank you for what you have done at Calvary. Thankful, thank you, dear God, for saving us from sin. And dear God, we pray that you will continue to give us everything that we need to keep moving on. And dear Lord, as we live in this life, help us to to do all that we can to help others because we are supposed to be our brother's keeper. Thankful for your blessings, dear Lord. Thankful for the showers of rain that have come upon the earth because we are so grateful 
because it looked as though things were parching. But we know that we serve a God who is able. We, are God, we serve a God who is always on time. And we have nothing to fear except that we should forget the way you have led us in the past. And you have promised even to lead us on to life eternal. This morning, we ask, dear God, that you will be with the speaker of the hour. You ask, we ask, dear God, that you would grant him a message, give him a message, that as we listen, dear God, that we will listen not only for time, but for all eternity. May our souls be encouraged. May our lives be enriched. And may we cast off every burden, knowing that there is a better day for me. As we even sit in our living rooms and we listen to the news, it seems to be everything bad that's going. There's wars on every hand. There's rumors of wars. There's problems on every hand. But dear God, you have told us in your word that when we see these things happening, that we must look up because our redemption drives now. Help us, God, to recognize that these are the beginning of sorrows. And that we need to make every opportunity, to buy every opportunity to make our calling and election sure. Dear God, we pray that we also will help others to come to know you, who to know is life eternal. Help us to recognize our calling, and may we do all we can to help others in times like these. We are thankful for the shut-ins this morning that we have visited. We are thankful, I'm thankful for Sister, Sister Farnham, who is 99.9, .9, but yet is still powerful, still mouthy, still abounding in the word of the Lord. I pray to God that you will continue to keep her and all others. And we know that you have promised never to leave us nor forsake us. And you have brought us, brought us this far by faith. And we know that you will continue to even carry her even to that grand age of 100 years. Continue to be with her, Lord. Continue to keep her. Continue to strengthen her mind and help that the enemy will stay away from her. God, dear God, I ask that you build a hedge about her. And I pray that she will, we will all, will all be able to celebrate with her on that grand occasion on the 4th of May, on the Sabbath day. May this be our experience, we pray. I pray no doubt that you will keep us and help us, Lord, when time shall be no more. And you come to claim us as your own. May we have the grand opportunity of looking up and welcoming you as our Lord and our Master. And then living with you through the countless days of eternity is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.
Now this same year, I have the deacons wait on us for our tithes and our offerings. May it happen. Have you ever wondered about the purpose of returning tithes and promise, regular and systematic offerings? Would we be correct to say that the primary purpose for returning tithes and promise offerings is to advance the church's mission? Well, let's first differentiate between the use of tithes and offerings, which is, of course, to advance God's mission and the purpose that should move us to give them. Then there is another question. Which one is God willing to receive the most, tithes and offerings or our hearts? You are right. The Lord says, My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. Character development is meant here. But why then does he ask us also to return our tithes and offerings? The truth is that our hearts always follow our resources. That is why Jesus said that wherever our treasure is, there your heart will be also. Ellen G. White says it in a, another way. This tithing system I saw would develop character and manifest the true state of the heart. Returning tithes and offerings aims to develop character and manifest what truly rules our hearts. Tithes and offerings are used to advance the cause of God, but the purpose of returning tithes and offerings is the development of our character. So when we talk about faithfulness in church or to our children, we shouldn't just argue that God's cause needs resources and that the mission needs to advance and therefore we need to be faithful. We should really emphasize how our hearts drift away from God when selfishness takes over and we are not faithful to Him. What we regularly give after any income or increase may not cause a significant impact on the mission of the church, but is undoubtedly revealing to ourselves and spiritual beings on both sides of the great controversy where our affections are. It is a transformative experience. As you give your tithes and promise offerings, ask God for a new heart, full of affections placed on higher things on eternal realities. May we put our desires last in God first. Let's stand as we pray for the offering. Dear God, we are so grateful that we can work so we can bring back a portion in tithes and offerings. We are thankful for what you have done for us. And we pray, dear Lord, that these offerings may go to help others who now are in darkness, that they may come to your marvelous light and have the opportunity of living in rainy with you before time be too late. We ask dear God that you will help them to, to, to continue to allow you to be part of their lives. And as we continue to live our lives, we pray that you will continue to bless us, so that we in turn we bless others in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We now have our children's story. God's story, the Sermon on the Mount. So part of God's story is about a sermon Jesus gave on the side of a mountain and what he did afterwards. And it goes like this. One day, when Jesus saw crowds gathering to hear him teach or see him do miracles, he went to the side of a mountain. It was near the Sea of Galilee, across from a place called Capernaum. From there, he gave a message all about God's kingdom and his love. We call this message the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus started by explaining who would get blessings or favor from God. He said the most blessed people are those who are poor, sad, or humble. He said God shows favor to people who are just or treat others fairly, and people who are merciful or show love to those who don't deserve it. He said the people who are pure, who bring peace, or who get hurt for doing right, 
will be rewarded for their actions in heaven. In other words, the people who love others, even when it makes them seem weak or unimportant on earth, are like heroes in God's kingdom. Anyway, Jesus went on to explain that when we believe in and follow him, it's our job to show everyone else who he is by loving them. That means going out of our way not only to comfort and help our friends, but also forgive people who hurt us, love our enemies, and give to people in need. The thing is, Jesus didn't just talk about love, he showed it all the time. In fact, right after giving this sermon, Jesus spent the rest of the day helping everyone he met. First, as Jesus came down from the mountain, a man with a skin disease called leprosy knelt before him. Lord, the man said, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Usually, no one wanted to be around people with leprosy, but Jesus touched him and said, I am willing, be healed. Instantly, the leprosy disappeared. Then, when Jesus arrived in Capernaum a bit later, a soldier said to him, Lord, my servant is in terrible pain. Right away, Jesus said, I will come and heal him. The officer said, just say the word from where you are, and my servant will be healed. Jesus told him, because you believed, it has happened. The officer's servant was healed. A little later, Jesus arrived at his disciple Peter's house. Peter's mother-in-law was there too, sick in bed with a high fever. Jesus touched her hand and the fever left. Later that evening, many other people who were demon-possessed or sick came to see Jesus. He brought relief to all of them. At the end of the day, Jesus got into a boat with his disciples. Suddenly, a fierce storm came out of nowhere. Waves began crashing into the boat. The disciples realized that even though they were in the middle of a giant storm, Jesus was fast asleep. They shouted, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. Jesus said, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he told the wind and waves to stop. They did. That day, Jesus taught a lot of people how to love and showed them what love looks like. Whenever somebody took their sickness or pain or fear to Jesus, he helped them. Everybody who met Jesus got to experience his love. And when we love like Jesus, everyone who meets us can feel his love too. And that's the story of the Sermon on the Mount. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Crowds gathered. Jesus went to a mountain. He gave a sermon. He talked about God's kingdom. He told us how to love others. Jesus didn't just talk about love. He showed it. He healed sick people. He saved people who were demon-possessed. He calmed storms. He showed his love to everyone he met. Our job is to do that too. And that's a part of God's story. I'm standing again, not to be the speaker for the hour, but to introduce the speaker for the hour. One of the remaining wise men from the East has come this way. A man who loves the Lord and is so committed that coming from Golan's to Sinandra did not pose a challenge to him. But he came to Mount to Hillaby because he loves God's people and has a message that God has put on his heart to share with them. Now he has successfully been able to blend business with Christianity, a thing that most people find difficult to do. But as a successful businessman, he uses his Christianity to help his business partners recognize that there's coming a day when Jesus is returning. I want to let you know that after the voice that will thrill our hearts is completely through, the words you will hear coming from the voice of Brother 
Kalman, Brother Hankson, from the Golan's Seventh-day Adventist Church, who is our speaker for today, ought to engage your rap attention. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon, church. I'm happy to see you. Are you happy to see me? I don't know if it's the breeze that I don't know if the breeze has a sedate or something, but um, I'm happy to be here. Amen. Uh, the brother spoke, my friend spoke about not seeing uh, coming from St. Philip in the east. Uh, Golan to be exact um, and driving for just about 45 minutes to get here uh, last Sabbath I drove for an hour and 45 minutes to get to a church to preach so my brother that was not <laughs> I, I just came out of Dominica preaching so that was not a drive at all once the Lord allowed the vehicles that he has allowed me to manage to get on the road and get safely, I'll come. I'll come. So I want to thank your church. I want to thank the, the eldership. I want to thank the, the, the persons who made it possible for me to be here. I want to say thank you. Um, I want to say that uh, God is going to bless us as we exalt his name today. Amen. Four things I want you to remember about me. Every time you see me or hear me preach, and I know some of you from seeing you and some of you who have greeted me at one point or another and some who would have heard me preach before who went to different churches. <laughs> but uh, four things I always want you to remember about me. One, I'm not God. I may say things as though I am God, but I am not God. I am faced with the same condemnation that you are faced with. Secondly, I am not to be compared with any other speaker. I am not to be compared with any other speaker. If God wanted all of us to speak the same way, he would have kept C.D. Brooks alive. He would have kept Bradford alive. He would have kept Bird alive. But all of us have our unique styles. But we're after one thing. And that's to make sure that you're closer to Jesus Christ. Thirdly, I'm not a long preacher. Surely I'm not going to be up here for one hour. I'm not going to preach that long. Mm -mm. And fourthly, I'm obligated by God to make a call after every sermon. So I'm going to make a call. If you respond, however you respond, that's your business. I know one sure thing that I'm resolutely grounded in the word of God. I know it's time for preaching, but I, I just want to sing one song. Can you, can you allow me to sing that song? Can you join with me if you know it? I learned this one at camp over 25 years ago. And by the way, if any young person wants to go to camp, please help them out. I didn't hear you, amen at all. <laughs> You know, I've, I've had the opportunity to preach this gospel from Jamaica all the way down to Guyana. And for the last three years, I was in Antigua preaching. And uh, when camp comes around, I normally send some funds over there so the pastors can help in their churches to send young people to camp. I found that camp was a really meaningful to me, and it kept me where I am. And I've learned this one at camp a long time ago. Something beautiful, something good. You know it, sing with me. All my confusion, he understood, he understood. And all I had, and all I had to offer him was this brokenness. 
and strive, but he made something beautiful in my life. Let's sing it all one more time. Something beautiful, something good. All my confusion, he understood. And all I had to offer him was this brokenness. And strive, but he made something beautiful of my life. We're praying, Father, it is by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, I wanted you to, because of the lateness of it, I think it is saying just about a quarter past 12, because of the lateness, I, I normally like the, the church to stand as we revisit the scripture reading. I have found that Seventh-day Adventists are, are getting a little weak when it comes to standing for the word of God. Uh, we stand at at attention for the national anthem. I have observed that we stand in Kentucky and Chaffetz for 20 minutes to wait for food. But when the word of God is being read, we sit. To me, almost in disrespect. I once heard a young lady, and she had 15 verses to read. And she told the church to remain seated because there are 15 verses. Now, 15 verses should only take about five minutes. She felt it was too long to stand to hear the word of God. But we're not going to stand today. So I'm just going to go straight in and I have to get back to church. I'm in charge of personal ministries and um, there are going to be folk waiting for me to get back so we can go in the field. A group of us go back into the field earlier, and then we go back to, to join the AYs, okay? So I have to get back up the road so that we can start that, as it were. It was six days before the Passover, and Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. It had come to the end of his time. He knew quite well that the time had come for him to give up the ghosts, where type was going to meet anti-type. Jesus knew that he was going to suffer on the cross for your sins and my sins six days before the Passover. And so he was making his way gradually to Jerusalem and he decided that, hey, I better stop in Bethany. Now, Bethany was just under the Monk of Olives there in Jerusalem, that small little city that he called that he liked to stop by because he had good friends there. Now, we ought to have good friends, amen? Amen. I don't like when I hear Christian people, Christian brethren, saying that their best friend is a non-Adventist or a non-Christian. You see, they can invite you to everything that they can think possible, but then when you invite them to church, they won't come. But he has some good friends in the name of Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. And oftentimes, Jesus would visit their homes and sit with them and tell them about the love of God and the gospel that it is. We ought to have friends that we can invite to our homes. COVID is finished. Huh? <laughs> We're we still not inviting anyone to our homes? Uh, you know, I've been around for a lot of years. And I find that the church is getting more selfish. You see, before you start to condemn the church or say things about the church, you should be in it for a certain time. You should have been wounded by the church. You should have gone through your battles with the church. And let me tell you, some of the worst wounds that we can ever have is from the church. 
when the brethren start to talk about you. It's worse than if those non-believers talk about you. The brethren can be harsh. Huh? And you wonder if the, 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 the name of the Lord is the same name that you carry. We found the brethren getting even worse. But Jesus had some friends, so he loved to go over and talk to them, and they talked with him. And so he decided to stop in Bethany to talk to his friends one more time. But Simon, now you would read in one of the Gospels that Simon the Pharisee, and then another one you would see Simon the leper. It's the same Simon. Simon decided to invite Jesus over to his home. You see, he wasn't really one that was called, but he wanted to be one of Jesus' disciples. Jesus had done so much for him, and so he believed that he was part of Jesus' network. And so he invited Jesus to dinner, and Jesus decided, well, hey, look, you know what? I'm going to go over to Simon's house and sit with him. Now here, the sermon is entitled today, What a Congregation. What a Congregation. Others heard that Jesus was making the, the little tour line to Bethany who were coming from all the regions around to get to Jerusalem. And as they heard, they decided, well, hey, look, we better stop in Bethany because we want to see about this Jesus. If he can do all the things that others were saying that he was doing, if he was the man that they were saying that he was, we better stop into Bethany. And they were not only stopping, the Bible tells us, for Jesus' sake, they were also stopping to see Lazarus, the man who he had raised from the dead. You see, the reason that they were going were not all the best reasons. I want to challenge you today. I want to ask you the question, why is it that you are at church today? Why is it for 52 Sabbaths in a year that you can put on clothes and some of us put on makeup and polish our nails? Now, I, 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 I don't want to offend anyone. I, I, don't want to, uh, I don't want to seem as though I'm harsh on the brethren. But some of us are beginning to change the look that we were once accustomed to. This is another sermon that I preach, but the mind is coming back to mind. I remember years ago, one of my mechanics decided that he was going to do some work on the vehicle because it was overheating. And I went into Simpson Motors. I'm going to be very fast because this was not part of the sermon. This is an introduction to another sermon that I preach, but I'm going to say it now anyhow. And, and, and so I was there in Simpson Motors, and I was waiting because he was overhauling the vehicle. And I had to wait till all of these men decide to put all of these things in the computer to get the part right for me. And there were lots of parts that he wanted because he was overhauling the vehicle. He was overhauling the engine. I wasn't pleased that he was doing that for just an overheating problem but he said to me hey if I overhaul the engine you're going to know exactly what is in the engine so it may work better than you buying one I'm, I'm, I'm speaking fast I'm speaking fast listen fast and, and hey everyone else who was sitting there in Simpson Motors Inkscape now as they're called everyone that was there left I was the only one that was there after 45 minutes sitting waiting on these guys and you know how we are if we're not doing something for 45 minutes, we get a little antsy. Huh? We get a little anxious. We, we want to be doing something. We want to be, be active. You know we can't sit in church for half an hour without bowing our heads now. I got gotcha. you. You weren't looking for that. But the, the internet has made us so... so attentive to action. That if we're sitting alone for half an hour, we get bored. We must have action, action, action. You know, we can sit in front watching YouTube and looking at Facebook for two hours and we can't read the word of God for half of an hour. We come to church and when, like I am, a, a, a teacher at the church, and, and the teacher asks, who studied today? And everybody wished that I didn't ask the question. But we can look at YouTube and some of us don't even wait 
for the Lord to wake us up properly and we're diving for our phones to see who messaged us during the night. What's wrong with us, man? What's wrong with us? We call ourselves Christians. I was waiting on these parts and I, I got a little anxious and, and so I, I wanted somebody to talk with. And I went up to the cashier and I said to her, do you know Jesus loves you? And she looked at me startled and she said, yes, I know. I said, how do you know that Jesus loves you? You see, that's my introduction to people. Do you know that Jesus loves you? And she looked at me and she said, yes, because he lives right here pointing to her chest, her heart. And I said, playing the fool, I said to her, how do you know that Jesus loves you and he lives there? She said, by his praying and Bible study. And she looked at me wondering, and then she said, why are you asking all of these questions? I said, because I want to become a Christian. You look like you're a Christian. She said something to me, brethren, that has resonated with me for the, for all, from that time even to now. She said to me, but I am not a seven days. And I wondered if she knew me, if she could read my thoughts. But her response to, to that was that people mistake me for seven days. She didn't say seventh day advantage. She said seven days. It's because I don't wear makeup or jewelry. And I was held. I'm a, this is dead. Something is in and out. Oh, I'm pressing on. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm not seeing it. Sorry. And, 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 and I wanted to know, and the, the Spirit of God told me to tell her that you're a seven day Adventist. And I said, But I am a seven day Adventist. And she said, But I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, but, but you know, now, you, you, you know, the women are trying to fit in. I said, to fit into what? And she said, you know, they're wearing a little makeup now. And I, I, the way the world views us and we view ourselves is amazing. Now everybody is beginning to, to spend a lot of time in the mirror. And some of our church people are beginning to wear these fans on their eyes. I, I don't know. I'm, 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 I don't want to be offensive. But, but to me, it looks ugly. I don't care how large they are or how small they are. I, I don't know if God made them to cool your eyes. I don't think so. But we are, we, we are seeing these big fans in church now over your eyes or on, on your eyelid. Paying somebody lots of money. Going into stores and making sure you get the largest one because you want to stand out. What's wrong with us? What's, what's, what's wrong with us? For me, the most beautiful women are the women who are plain. I thought I had another man in here who had the same <laughs> thought as me, man. <laughs> but anyhow, let me get back to the script before I keep you wrong. But that just came to mind. I had to put it in. But, um... But, but, but why it is that you come to church every Sabbath? Why is it that you are praying meeting, I hope you are, every Wednesday night? And you should be. Elder, do you have Wednesday night service? No, nobody said amen. You, you, you ought not to take up the, the position of eldership and don't support the church with your attendance. We're having some weak elders in the church because they don't attend prayer meeting. They're too busy. They can't study the word. So the church keeps going down and down and down because we're having some weak elders. Mm. 
My, I don't care if you've been to the University of the West Indies and you have two degrees and three doctorates. I believe a man who is resolute in God is more powerful than anyone who has studied all of his years. I'll challenge you, elders of this church. Every time the door of the church is open, you make a way to get to church. If, if there are only five persons at church, make sure it's the five elders of the church. I don't miss church. I believe the safest place for me is at church. I feel safer at church than any other place. When I leave church, that's when I start to pray harder. Because I don't know what the devil has for me. But why are you at church, man? Because you have the clothes? Because you have the vehicle and gas? Because you have nothing better to do? They were going to Bethany for the wrong reasons. Why are you here? To help someone along the way? Why are you here? The only reason we should be here is because we woke up this morning with Jesus on our mind. Come on, say amen. And nothing was going to stop us, whether rain, sun, or whatever. It's going to stop us from being here. I went to my church first and then I came here. I could have driven all the way down here and sit and wait till you come back. But I went and be part of song service first. Made sure I returned my tithe. And I'm getting to that just now. But brothers and sisters, they went there and, and so, hey, here's the rostrum. I want to set it up, the rostrum. Remember the sermon is entitled, What a Congregation. So on the rostrum, we had Martha. We had Lazarus. We had Mary. We had Simon and we had Judas with the 12 disciples around on the, music, on the choir stand. So Martha was the first to, to, to speak. Now, when you read the Bible, for those of us who do, when you read the Bible and you hear about Martha, Martha is always serving. She's generous. Huh? She's always a caregiver, always making sure that you're fed. Always making sure she greets you and, 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 and all of those things. I wish the church had more Marthas. Huh? We, we don't help each other anymore. We, we've become so selfish, we only think about ourselves and our families. But Martha was not like that. As a matter of fact, it appears as though Jesus, as Ellen White said, as though Jesus condemned Martha when she, when she was calling Mary on a different occasion. And Jesus said, well, leave Mary alone because she's doing a good thing. But Jesus wasn't condemning her because we need some more Marthas in the church. Some of those who work in the background. You see, for some of us, if our names are not going to be called or plastered on the wall that we did something great or magnificent, we're not going to do it. Huh? The church is in need of a keyboard and a keyboard player. Somebody sponsor one of the young kids to keyboard lessons, please. You have to wait until the elder calls it and, and, and your name is, you lift your hand, I'm going to do it so everybody can praise you. Let us start to do some things that, 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 that others don't have to see us, but we do it for the goodness of God. Remember, I'm not God. Remember, that's the first thing. I would say things as though I'm God, but I am not God. And then we move over to Lazarus. Lazarus was sitting on the rostrum and he was there. One of the gospel writers said that Lazarus was there reclining. Just resting himself. Cool. You know, every time for those of us who read the Bible again, every time you come across Lazarus, he is not seen a word. Huh? They went over there to see Lazarus and also to hear what the grave was like or if he went up to heaven. And I'm there 
Elder, as I'm, I'm, I'm reading the scripture, I'm dear, and the, the Spirit of God has taken over my mind. And, and he's telling me, he's telling me, and I'm praying that Lazarus would say something to confirm what I believe that this church teaches. As Ecclesiastes 9, 5, and 6 tells us, that the dead knows nothing. I wanted Lazarus to, to put them in their place to let them know that your love die, your memory dies, everything about you die when you die. But Lazarus didn't confirm it. Lazarus didn't say a word. And some of us can go to a whole service without even saying a word. Some of us have not unpicked our teeth yet since we came and sat here to sing a song, to tell someone God loves you, to tell someone I'm glad that you're part of the family of God. You haven't told anyone beside you yet how wonderful and beautiful you are, that you were made in the image of God. Some of us come to church and, and sit for three hours and say not a word. Man, if God has done something for you, you can't keep quiet. I didn't hear the church. If God has done something for you, you can't keep quiet. And even if, even if, you don't have a testimony that God did something wonderful for you today as you woke up. Even if you still ought to praise God. You know, I sit in a certain area at church because my Sabbath school class normally gathers in that particular area. And I, I don't want to be moving around when the time is called. So I sit in that particular area. And you know, by 9 o'clock and the folk don't see me, they're concluding two things. One, I'm out preaching somewhere. Or I have gone to pick up someone to bring them to church. Brethren, I have an appointment with God every Sabbath. The appointment is 9.15, they begin. But actually, it begins at 6.30 in the morning when I allow the alarm to wake me up at that time. And then I start to get ready. And brethren, I am checking the clock on the wall because I want to speed up the time to get to church, to fellowship, and to worship with God and his people. I hate to get to church late. Some of us walk into God's presence at quarter to 10 and 10 o'clock like if God owes us something. I better go on before I'm never allowed to preach here again. So Lazarus said not a word. And we skip Mary, and we skip the man in the middle who's Jesus, and we go over to Simon. Now the Bible says Simon was a leper. You know what a leper is. Couldn't walk down the tongue. If he was walking down the tongue, he had to shout out, I'm a leper, and yet others would run from him. But Jesus took the time to heal this man. And here Simon, Simon believed because Jesus healed him that he was one of Jesus' disciples. Now, you could be healed. It doesn't mean that you're one of Jesus' disciples. Huh? You know, you know, Jesus, you know, you know, God is answering prayers of those who have passed on, who have prayed for you. He's now answering those prayers. You don't think so? My mother has passed. And my mother's prayer was always keep that boy of mine grounded. In the faith. Now she was a Jehovah's Witness. 
But she saw that what I believe, I live. Now, I haven't always got it right. And I'm sure that you sometimes get it wrong. Huh? Because sometimes we have some Christians that are, are, are so heavenly minded that they're, they just can't walk on earth. But all of us are under the same condemn, condemnation. All of us make our individual mistakes. So, ladies and gentlemen, he healed Simon. And Simon had the audacity. You see, Mary was close to Jesus. Now, I, I want to set your mind there. Now, Mary was not supposed to be there. You see, at that time, women were considered to be, you know, the prayer was, Lord, thank you that I'm not a Gentile. Thank you I'm not a, I'm not a woman. Because women were seen as dogs. And, and it, was, it was not the right place for Mary to be, because Mary always loved to be close to Jesus. If you, if, you, if, you, if you read your Bible like I read my Bible, and you understand clearly, every time you read about Mary, she's worshiping. Every time we read about Mary, she's worshiping. Come on, church. YouTube didn't stop her from worshiping. The men around there who would have said all kinds of things about her couldn't stop her from getting close to Jesus. You, you, you can say anything about me. I, I don't really bother. Big nose, bald head. Teeth not all white. You, you can say anything about me. It don't bother me. Huh? Some people are so... <laughs> I wouldn't say what came to mind. But, 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 but come on, man. You got to know who you are. What you think about me do not, or it does not define who I am. Some people can rake up some things that happened to you 25 years ago to make you feel bad to someone else. But Mary wasn't like that. She always found herself worshiping, worshiping. There's some times of the day you don't call me. Please don't call because you would hear a machine going on. And if you send a WhatsApp because you really want to get my attention, it has to wait until I'm finished with Jesus. I don't care how dire it is. You have to wait until I am finished worshiping. And my worship is not only in the morning. It comes at midday. It comes in the evening after work. It comes when I'm at the kitchen sink. And sometimes tears start to flow down my eyes when I think about the goodness of God. Sometimes it comes when I'm, I'm in the car and, and, and I'm ready to preach. I think sometimes people believe that this man got to be crazy because I'm at the top of my lungs and I'm preaching with my windows open, evil in traffic, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Warn to you seven-day Adventists whose neighbors don't know that you are a Christian. You can't show up at some seven-day Adventist workplace and call them brother or sister. Why? Because they start to hide. They, they have not told the other workers that they are Christians. Reminds me of Peter when the lady, young lady said, well, yeah, you're one of him, his. And a man says, well, your voice got you in trouble, brother. And Peter kept saying, no. What's wrong with us? <laughs> I'll be happy in the Lord. <laughs> But just enjoy the fellowship with the Spirit of God. Enjoy the, the, the fellowship with the brethren. Just, just enjoy life in Jesus. You don't, be, you don't have to be part of every Kaduman band to be happy. You don't have to have the big car or the big ride to be happy. You don't have to have a lot of money on the bank to be happy. Look at me. I drive a car that's about 17 years old. 
He got me down here. <laughs> and Ella, I drove an AC. It has power windows and power steering, just like your big ride. But it got me here. Some of us want to live like the Joneses, and when the time comes to put diesel or gas in it, we can only go to the station and put $20 in it. <laughs> Anyhow, I don't want to pass you, so let me, let me move on. But Mary's always worshiping. I'm going to come to a close just now. She broke that bottle. Some, one of the gospel writers said that she poured it on his head. I like the part when it said that she anointed his feet. She poured it on his feet. Now, she was doing something really secretive. Everybody don't know how, have to know when you worship. But Ellen White says in Desire of Ages that what gave her away was the fragrance. The fragr fragrance gave her away. And here, Judas. Now, a lot of people don't like when I get here, but I'm going to go here. Here, Judas. The, the, the brother could reason. Huh? The, the brother was reasoning with the other disciples, Ellen White said. And he was so persuading that he persuaded the other disciples to side with him. Man, you know we could have sold that for 300, uh, let's call it dollars, and, 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 and given to the poor. The Bible says that he said that because he was a, a thief. Now, he was a treasurer. I don't know the treasurer of this church. I don't want to know the treasurer of this church. And, and I don't mean no disrespect or whatever, but we got to be careful what we do with God's money. I know of a treasurer who was a treasurer of a certain church for a lot of, a, 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 a fair amount of years, and the, the, the brother bought land out of the church money. One of the elders keep, every time we had church board, would, would keep saying all the time, well, look, we better get an auditor to come in and audit the, audit the books. And, and everybody was saying, no, well, he's a good treasurer and all of that. And when we found out, we found out that he had bought land with the church's money. Well, he paid it back, but I mean, he got caught. God's money is not your money. You can't do as you like with God's money. And some of us who condemn Judas are the same thieves just like him. Jesus, God says it. Malachi says that can a man rob God? Yeah. Well, how can you do that? With tithe and offering. Huh? Didn't the Bible say that? Huh? Some of us are taking God's tithe and, and offering and doing whatever we want to do with it. Sometimes we build these houses, can't reach the mortgage, and so we take God's money. And <laughs> Some of us buy cars, and when the bank starts to call, <laughs> Hmm? Sometimes our children, children want to travel and we take God's money and hmm. God is going to hold you responsible for not returning a faithful tithe and offering. I return a double tithe. Whatever my businesses make, I return a double tithe. Now, you, you don't have to do what I'm saying. It's, it's really up to you. But I'm just challenging you. Like Judas, God is going to call you a thief. Because you held back on tithe and offering. And so the disciples, as I come to an end started to agree with his brother. And Judas, before he allowed Jesus to speak, 
started to speak. Oh, we could have done this. We could have done that. And she said in Desire of Ages, because he held the money bag, he helped himself to the money. She said that sometimes, yes, they did indeed give to the poor. I want to be thing. But this time, his thoughts were not like that. And Jesus said, Jesus listened to everything. I like to, I'm not Jesus, but I like to listen to comments at church when we're discussing. I like to be the last to speak. I, I, I don't claim to know everything. I don't profess to know everything. But I like if the little that I know, I like to speak last. So if a question is asked in church or in class, I allow it to go around the class first before I give an input. Not that I don't have an opinion, but I want to make sure my opinion is wrapped up in Jesus. Not my opinion, and it stays my opinion. Because the church is now moving on my opinion rather than what God says. You haven't heard it yet in, in, in your church? Sometimes we stand up and say, well, in my opinion. Well, if your opinion is not together with God's opinion, don't get up. Keep your opinion to yourself. That's why we have so many gray areas in this church, because too many of us have our opinion. That's why we can't tell somebody you're doing something wrong, because in my opinion. So he, he didn't allow Jesus, but Jesus, Jesus decided, well, look, I'm going to speak now. So Jesus in the middle. Jesus is a preacher. Jesus said, look, leave her alone. Because she's doing something that you all just don't understand. When I come to worship, sometimes I stand in the congregations with my, with the congregation with my hand outstretched. Because you don't know how my week went. How I had to battle with the devil. And I'm in a position now to just exclaim the goodness of God. Please don't stop me when you see me stand with my hands outstretched. And I start to reason with God. And I start to praise God for what he has done for me. You don't walk in my shoes. If I stand and say hallelujah, praise God. You don't know the battles that I face. Please don't condemn me. I'm just glorifying God. She was glorifying God. I want to end in these two, two points. One is, Jesus said, this, the, 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 the Desire of Ages, uh, Ellen White said, that she knew how to make someone who is alive feel worthy. You see, you see, we, we wait till the person dies to start buying all these fancy flowers and and, and saying all good things about them. Man, we gotta start doing things while people are alive. She said that those brothers, Joseph of Arimathea and, 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 and the other one, had a tomb for Jesus. They wanted his body. But while he was alive, they didn't show their gratitude. We often sing that he's alive today. We serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living. Whatever men may see. I see his hands of mercy. I hear. In just the time I need him. And we exclaim that he lives. So why do we worship as though he's dead? And this is the point that she made out of all of that reading 
in chapter 62 of the Zara of Ages that stood out for me as I close on this. She said that for them, the bottle of ointment, the expensive ointment, those around him believe it was too much to give to the Savior. That's the point that gripped me. Is it too much for you to give to a man, a Savior, who hung on the cross of Calvary? For your sins and my sins, who was spat upon, who was given vinegar to drink and a spear driven in his side. I read that they've flung the cross in the hole, ripping his palms and blood came. Is it too much? For the Savior today, Hillaby Church. Alleluia. Alleluia. Just stand with me and sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have more voices in here than that. Hallelujah, hallelujah, all the church singing, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let's sing, let's sing, Lord, we love you, Lord, we love you, Lord, we Love you. And this is not going to be a long call. Lord, Lord we love you. I'm going to ask all of those who love the Lord, who sing the Lord, we love Lord, you, just to come forward. We love if you love the Lord today, you. I'm just going to ask you to come at the foot of the cross. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And we sing it, Lord, we praise you as we come to an end. Lord, we praise you. Lord, Lord we praise you. Oh, yes, we do. Lord, Lord we praise you. What more can we say, Lord? Lord, we praise you. Oh, yes, Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. Oh, Lord, we do. Lord, Lord we praise you. Oh, yes, we do. Lord, Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Elder, pray for the church. Lord, the Heavenly Father, we are standing in your presence because you recognize our sinfulness. We recognize that at times we have drifted so far away from you that we have seemingly lost. But we recognize as we stand here before you that you have said, as long as we come to you in repentance, you will accept us. And so, the Heavenly Father, we bring to you our wretchedness and our sinfulness and ask you at this point that you will accept us. 
that you will wash us and you will cleanse us so your Holy Spirit can fill us and empower us to do what you've called us to do. There's a mighty work to be done there, oh, yeah. Heavenly Father. There are souls to be saved. Oh, yeah. There's a community that we have to interact with. Oh, yeah. And the Heavenly Father, we recognize that we can only do it if we are led and directed by your Holy Spirit. And so at this time, we plead for your Holy Spirit's presence. Be with us there, God. Help that the divisions we create among ourselves, that your Holy Spirit will take those divisions away. Help us to understand that it is not really about us, but it's about you. That it is your work, and we are privileged to be called to do your work. Help us to put aside the nonsense they have, Father, that distract us. And focus on the fact that you've washed us in the blood of the Lamb, that you've cleansed us with your Holy Spirit, they have, Father, and you've prepared us to do your work. And so we want to thank you, dear God, for your forgiveness. We want to thank you for your washing. We want to thank you for your cleansing. We want to thank you for the fact that the Holy Spirit has filled us and empowered us to do your will. Help that we will leave here today fully conscious of that and that the old path is behind us. And we want to walk in the new way. We thank you for having heard our prayer. Give you the honor and the glory. All in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Elder. The closing exercises would be announced. Through the tears that made her blind She felt such pain Some spoke in anger Heard folks whisper There's no place here for her kind Still on she came Through the shame that flushed her face until at last she knelt before his feet And though she spoke no words Everything she said was heard As she poured her love for the master From her box of alabaster And I've come to pour my praise on him like oil from Mary's alabaster box don't be angry if I wash his feet with my tears and I dry them with my hair you weren't there the night he found me You did not feel what I felt When he wrapped his love all around me And you don't know the cause Of the oil in my alabaster box I can't forget the way life used to be I was a prisoner to the sin that had me bound And 
and I spent my days Poured my life without measure into a little treasure box I thought I found Until the day when Jesus came to me And healed my soul with the wonder of His touch So now I'm giving back to Him All the praise He's worthy of I've been forgiven, and that's why I love Him so much. And I've come to pour my praise on Him like oil from Mary's alabaster box. Don't be angry. If I wash his feet with my tears And dry them with my hair My hair, you were not there The night Jesus found me You did not feel what I felt When he wrapped his love all around me And you don't know the cause of the oil no you don't know the cause of my praise you don't know the cause of the oil in my alabaster but Our closing song is To God Be the Glory, Great Things He Has Done. I invite everybody to stand up. We're going to sing the alternative version this afternoon as we give God all the praise and all the glory.
does not involve inactivity but replicating his actions. We ask now that as you take us from this place to our several homes throughout the rest of the day and the coming days of our lives, we will demonstrate that it is we are with Jesus. Not that we have been with Jesus as having left him, but that Jesus resides in us and with us. And through our daily actions, we will demonstrate his presence wherever we are. Now bless us and dismiss us, and bring us again in this place where we shall hear another word from you. But until then, Lord, keep us safe, trusting in your presence and your grace. We ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. I just, I just want to say thank you, church, for um, inviting me. It was a blessing to be here. I don't ever know if I'm going to come back on this side, but just keep the faith. Let, let's see in heaven, all right? Let's keep the faith. Let's see in heaven. Let's keep doing the work that God has asked us to do, and I'm sure that we all meet on that sea of glass. So blessings. God bless. All right. Uh, so just be seated as we can sing the Lord bless you and keep you.
Now, before we leave, now I understand that Deborah celebrated her birthday this week. Now, typically, we would sing before the event started, but I want to, you know, just as we sing happy birthday to Sister Deborah, I hope she had a really amazing day, and I pray God's blessings on you. So, let's go. A happy birthday to you, a happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Every day of the year, may you find Jesus near. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. The best that you are. You say, oh, may the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you.